through this process last year um, in terms of reviewing the applications and working with the staff, the hard working staff in the, uh, the lab, the Dublin City Arts Office. Um, and if I had been uh, looking through the applications this year, I would have raised the objection that Councillor O'Brien uh, has raised here this evening. Um, I, I think there is, or there seems to be, a, a major gap in most people's minds here between theory and practice. <laughs> this is a artist who's making a video in 100 years, the centenary of women getting the vote. And what we've had with the party that that senator belongs to over the last five years uh, when they were in power in this country was was austerity aimed primarily at women. Uh, it was the feminization of austerity. It hit single mothers in particular. So I do think that there is an issue there. Everything is political, so let's not pretend here. Um, and I do think it's an unfortunate, an unfortunate choice uh, on the, the part of the artist to choose this particular person. Because we do seem to suffer from political amnesia here, that somehow once you're out of power, uh, you can't be held accountable for your previous actions. You've dem demonstrably and uh, destructively affected a whole generation of women's lives and their children, uh, some of them, and to actually think that you now can whitewash that by joining housing coalitions and talking about how great it is for women to get the vote, as if what you haven't done over the past years means nothing, I think is, is utter hypocrisy. It's utter hypocrisy, so I support, I support Councillor O'Brien in this. Uh, it's not interfering with uh, the process that the Arts Office underwent. Uh, I think a political decision was made by some people there, perhaps, that this was acceptable, but others find it unacceptable. And to actually see a politician uh, being uh, partly funded through us to the tune of 3,000 euro has to be questioned.